Okay, some of you may remember this job. We were working on this job a while back and we actually were stripping Artex off the ceiling. And then we discovered the Artex had only been applied on top of plasterboard. So we stopped what we were doing and then we had to smooth off the Artex. Um, so then we put PVA on there, diluted PVA, sealed it. And then we put some insulation paper, lining paper on the ceiling. And then we lined it. Now this was, uh, I'm not sure now, I'll have to have a look, but possibly 12 months, maybe longer, could be two years now, I'm not sure, like I say, I'll have to have a look. <coughs> um, so, he had a problem with the gable end leaking. Um, he asked us to leave the job, wait till he's got the gable end fixed, and when he's got a bit more money, we can do a bit more work for him. So today we're here to paper the ceiling for him. Um, so let's just have a quick look how it's held up. I was just having a look and um, it's a year and a half since we did this ceiling. Um, it's perfect, you know, nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Like I say, that was our text. We smoothed the Artex off, we put insulation paper on, and then we lined it. And we're ready now to uh, put the wallpaper on the ceiling. But yeah, like I say, all the joints are fine, everything's fine on it. Not coming off anywhere. Right, so, first thing is. I'm going to remove the uh, wire off the light to make it easier. I turned the electric off first, took the wire off, and then I've put the cover back on and turned the electric back on. That's so it's safe now when I put the paper anywhere near it. I've also took the smoke alarm off. Um, I've put the screws back in and basically when I come to paper over, you just pop them through the paper. The next stage is to measure the paper out. Now, I'm papering this ceiling from left to right, as shown there in this, on the video. So, the reason I'm doing that on this one is because downstairs we're papering that ceiling as well. And we're working away from the natural light, which will be the same direction. Uh, so now I'm going to go and check my paper, measure the width of my paper and then do my marking out on the ceiling and make uh, sure I've got a straight line across the ceiling for my first length. This is the paper I'm putting on. Uh, it's quite nice, I like the pattern on that. It'll suit this house. Um, and that's made by... Belgrave Decor. Right, let's just have a quick look there. All the batch number. I've checked all the batch numbers over. And this is a straight match at 26.5 centimetres. So like I say, first off, I'm going to measure the width of the paper and then mark it out on the ceiling. Ready to mark out this ceiling. Um, and obviously, as you can see in the centre, there's the light. And with this being a square pattern, if possible, I'd like to get a square more centralised in the centre. Um, it's difficult this, but on this paper, you've got a dead centre and then obviously a square. So I'll do that way. Dead centre and then a square that's offset. So first of all, I tried it dead centre. And then when I'm working this way, I'll end up where there's a little strip, which is no good. So, going off the off centre of that square, in the centre of the square on the left side, it works out 
a lot better. But what you also need to do is make sure that when you go the other way, you don't end up with a silly strip of paper that you're trying to put on at the edge. You always want to have a nice piece of paper that you're working with. So, now I've worked out where I want the line to go, I know for a fact I've got plenty of overhang. So, working off that mark, I'm going to measure that mark and then put a measurement from down there up and then a measurement from up here up using a piece of string I'll see where they sit. Taking tape measure make a measurement on that pencil line there and that's 16 and a half but I know the paper the wall itself sorry dips in down at the bottom end there so I'm going to put a mark on here to the 16 and a half and then again on this side I'm going to put a mark to 16 and a half And then I'm going to put a pin in here and a pin in here and put a piece of string between them and just see how it sits and then I'll adjust it so it looks straight against the wall. I've taken a snap line and I've got some drawing pins. I'm just going to put it through the centre of the string there. And then on your mark, push it into the ceiling. Then take it across to your next mark. Now, when I'm looking at that down the ceiling here, and how I feel on the stairs for squaring it up, it looks to me as though it's a quarter of an inch out, it's not straight. I mean, nothing's straight, but this is all, you know, you've got to work this out by your eyes. So I'm going to come over by a quarter of an inch and then pin the string again. So sometimes if there's enough chalk on your string or you've chalked it, you can ping it like that. But to be honest, I usually just put a few pencil marks behind because I hate getting chalk on everything and having blue hands. And so a few pencil lines does me. So now what I'm going to do is measure the length. I'm taking the tape measure, I always work off a two foot, I just find it easier. Um, so you can measure two foot and make a little mark. Another two foot. And then that gives me a six foot mark there. Now, for the six foot mark, I want to make sure I've got an inch of paper to cut round for the overlap on either side to cut off. Now, if you was putting wallpaper on straight away, you'd want to leave just an eighth of an inch of paper lapping round so you can overlap your other paper onto it on the edge so it just leaves a neater finish. But because this ceiling is going to get emulsioned and left for a while, we're just going to trim the paper off neat around the edge 
uh, and then just emulsion the sealing and then at a later date it may get papered or just painted but that doesn't matter then. So going back to this, that last bit from the six foot mark, you want to make sure you've got the overlap on either end. So from that six foot, that's another foot. And you want to add on an inch and a half on either end, so that's three inches. One, two, three. So that ends up as seven foot, three inches that length. When it comes to your paper, what I like to do is open a few rolls and set them to one side because um, when they've been rolled up like this and they're actually shrink wrapped it pulls their ends in so they better be left for a bit open so it just can relieve it um, and when you do open it you can see all around that edge the, the paper has been melted with heat and it ruins the edge of the paper so what I do is I check down the paper to see how badly it's damaged and then I'll cut off a section uh, so I'm going to cut off to that square there right. now coming to this first length so we're ready to measure the length of the paper now uh, we know the length is 7 foot 3 inches, giving us an overlap of an inch and a half for either end. So off that, off the edge of your bench there, put your paper. I've got a 6 foot mark down here. So I'm going to return my paper at the 6 foot mark. So then all I need to do is cut off, uh, sorry, is just add on a foot and 3 inches. Just going to put the pencil there, and then that's where you can cut the paper. Right, I need six lengths, so I'm going to cut all my lengths now because there's no uh, change in the pattern or the size of the ceiling. So because I know it's a repeat pattern, you just need to find out where it repeats. Now you can see it's not right there, so I'm going to lose that much in waste. But it's not too bad. So I'm going to leave that there and work out this first. Make sure your lens are in the light, nice line on the bench. And then just repeat that. We've cut all our lens. And I've just got this last bit of trimming to do here. So that's where I want my length to. Just make sure they're all nicely in the line. I mean, you could do them all individually as you're going, but saves time. Right. It's probably not as lower than anything else. So as you can see, I'm going to put a pencil mark on the backs of each one. So I know exactly which is the top of each length. Sometimes this also helps when you're cutting off strips, so you know which top end of the strip is and which side of the strip is as well sometimes. Right, now once I've done that, I'm going to fold all the paper roll it back on itself and then I'm just going to gently squash it this 
call it breaking it back. It's actually the leaf out of the paper. do is make sure every length again is nicely in line. It's nice and slippy this paper. And make sure they're in the, the centre of your bench. Taking your first length off of that up. In fact, sorry, because we're papering the ceiling and we've put a line on the ceiling and we're going to fold the paper in a certain way to paper the ceiling, you need to be able to look at the line when you're on your plank. So when you're doing the first length, what we do is we reverse it. So the first length, you stand on your plank in an, on your left hand side and you put this pace on. And then on your second length, you work for the right hand side. So the top ends will be all at the same end, but this is so you don't break your neck trying to look at the line when you're putting it on. Right, right. now I'm ready to paste the first length. So. Offer that up to the edge of your bench. Now I'm using the uh, Solvite packet paste, you mix it yourself. You want to make sure you get plenty of paste on the edges of your paper. Draw your brush back that way. Because we're papering the ceiling, a special fold. fold in there and then just fold the end piece over and I'm going to allow that to soak for 10 minutes right time is up there so we're ready to put this paper on I'm going to release the first fold Having your paper hanging brush at the ready, 
but you've got to get it onto the uh, following the line first of all, making sure that you've got your overlap of about an inch and a half there, and then following the pencil line, then taking your paper hanging brush and slowly work it into position and then brushing from side to side just follow your pencil line down just allow a fold out each turn not following your line you can always just slightly push it back in What you want to do is pencil round and then um, trim it off. You're keeping it on your pencil line and then from side to side. So like I was saying before, we've, we've redone the pattern because my customer wanted a square sitting in the centre and we've tried that for him and it looked awful on the rest of the ceiling. So, I'm going back to what we suggested and we've got the centre line of the wall near enough in the centre of the pattern and we've worked it out the same across. So now, all I've got to do is trim off the excess around the ceiling. And just make sure you've got no bubbles in your paper. That's good, that. And then, around the edge, if I was actually putting another paper on the wall, I'd leave an eighth of an inch of paper round so I can overlap the other paper. But because we're only painting the walls for the time being, I'm going to trim the paper off right to the edge of the wall where the ceiling is. So once you've put your line on, you can use a snap off blade if you want. But I like using the scissors. Might take a few seconds longer, but it, it leaves a better cut, I think. Now, once you've trimmed that off all round, you want to wipe off any paste around the top of the edge of the wall. Uh, So the second length you put on from the opposite way, but with the uh, paper the right way around on your pole. Uh, it's never easy doing ceilings, but you want to uh, get your pattern lined up. best you can. And then 
taking your paper handling brush slowly spread it out making sure all the time the patterns match now what you want is it more matching in the centre and right at the ends of that when you done that. Not bad at all. to cut off this end because like I say to save paper the paper we had actually cut we just swapped it all around to make the pattern sit in better on the ceiling so that's why there's a lot less to cut off on this end than there is that end hopefully we won't have to cut any more paper to Finish off with the lens. We can finish off with what we've got already cut. And just making sure that joint is nicely bought. Before I finish off the paper. So again, all it is now is trim it off at either end and wipe the paste off. Um, I'll just show you down that joint now quickly. Pattern from this end. We'll go up to the joint and then we'll come across. You know, keeping your pattern as close as you can to being butt with the joints and making sure your pattern's in line. That's not too bad at all, that. There you go. So, I'll cut that off and then I'll show you cutting around the light pendant. I mean, this is, seems a decent paper that's been designed so it lies within a tolerance so you can you know, manipulate them with these lines. So I'm up to the uh, ceiling pendant. Um, they're not easy to go around. They're easier once you've took the wire off. But what you want to do is find the centre of it with the tip of your scissors. And then take it away and poke a hole through. And then cut in to one side, make a nice neat cut. And then make another cut 90 degrees to it and then another cut 90 degrees to that and then another cut back on yourself from that centre spot now hopefully it will fit round and if you don't you just have to make sure make another cut well, that should be pretty good Well, coming back to this now, you want to put a few more cuts in 
going off the centre point of each other cut. You can do the cuts closer in this time. Basically, what you want to do is repeat that round till you're happy that the pattern, sorry, the paper, is nicely snug fit around. And when you've got it pretty much, what you do, draw around with your pencil as deep in as you can. Now this this has been slightly released. This. So when I cut this pencil line off, it's just going to be right under the plastic near it off. So. But just to make sure, I'll cut on the, I'll cut so I'll leave the pencil line on slightly on each cut. And again, you're better turning the electricity off for this, so I've isolated the, uh, the lights on the house. Now, I may have to move my scaffold in to finish this to be safe. But, you get the idea, and once you've got it to that point, you can just tuck the pieces in. And then wipe off any uh, any paste on the light. And it's done.
all finished and it does look good the customer's already decided to get a new light which will sit more uh, in the centre and not show the wire going to the pendant so that will uh, look even better when that's done but overall the pattern's worked out really well and the customer's happy so on to the next job quick shot from down here just to see how square the ceiling looks um, it's not bad at all both directions 